Today's review, we unmask Spider-Man as we have a look at the Diamond Select Spider-Man Homecoming Spider-Man Special Collector Edition action figure. And thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select for supplying this. This is the unmasked Tom Holland head sculpt Spider-Man. That's a mouthful. From the Disney Store. This is the Disney Store exclusive Spider-Man Marvel Select figure. The first thing we'll do, Cool Cats, I did call you Cool Cats, we're going to go ahead and measure off Spider-Man from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. The Ultra Measuretron 5000 tells us that the figure stands 6.5 inches in centimeters. Now that works out to be 16.6 centimeters in height. The figure comes with a display stand, yes. You are correct, astute viewers. It is the same display stand that we saw with the other masked retail release Spider-Man. It's the exact same display base. And unfortunately, while I don't remember, I should have had a V8 where I left the masked version of Spider-Man. If you want to go back and have a look at that on this channel, just have to look up, I guess you could probably look up Spider-Man Homecoming, review spot, Spider-Man Homecoming, or you could look on this channel. But there's been about 7,500 videos. I kid you not. It might be a little harder to search, but there's probably a playlist there as well for you. In fact, I'm certain there's a Spider-Man playlist. Anyways, we're getting sidetracked. A nice little rooftop diorama scene once again proves to us that Diamond Select are the kings. The kings when it comes to diorama display stands. This ideally could have been used really for anything. So if you wanted to use this display stand, not that I would encourage you moving over to different franchises, you could certainly make use of the display stand for other things as well. Uh, you can see the really nice job on the brickwork, painting it and sculpting it. The stonework there as well, even the cracks on the top of the rooftop here. And uh, then there's a little chimney and a smoke exhaust pipe. I think that's a little smoke exhaust pipe. Overall, a really neat looking display stand. There is no peg holes on the top there. So ideally, let me just move those over. Ideally, you're just only going to place Spider-Man on top. Yes, it's, it's a little boring. Or you can also have him sitting, being that he is, after all, superposable. You get him sitting on top of the chimney. Although I have to admit, I'm not Spider-Man, but I would imagine his powers would still allow him to get a warm tush if some chimney smoke was to come out of that. So just FYI, Spider-Man. We'll move this out of the way as we've already had a look at it. And Spider-Man, of course, comes with some interchangeable hands, but why don't, before we do all of that, at least the hand portion of things, let's have a look at this fantastic figure. Now, being that this is a Disney Store exclusive, you have some possibilities, some options for picking up this figure for yourself. Technically, you have two, or possibly three. You could have a friend that is such of the generous kind that decides, oh, for Christmas, I'm gonna give this guy the unmasked Peter Parker, either loose in hand or it's completely sealed. That would be entirely up to him. Possibility two, you could search this guy online, find him in online circuit markets, like eBay for whatnot. Or, I guess one the best one is if you have one locally, which I so happen to have, you can go to a Disney store and you should be able to find this guy. What you are finding though is a pretty neat looking Spider-Man. I quite enjoyed the earlier, the earlier one that we looked at, of course, that had the mask. This is the unmasked Peter Parker slash Tom Holland head scarf, uh, sculpt. It is interesting, though, when I did the unboxing of the Hot Toys Spider-Man, everybody says that's not Peter Parker, that's Tom Holland. I sort of just stopped for a minute and let my brain sort of digest what I had just read. So I guess for those who are wanting to say this is Tom Holland's head sculpt rather than Peter Parker, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. For a head sculpt, it's not bad. I feel like it's not quite the likeness of actor Tom Holland, 
but it is a really neat looking head sculpt. Of course, he's got the longer hair, all here done in a nice dark brown. This is one thing that I kind of wish that the figure did have, though, was a swappable head. Now, I know we got the swappable head in a retail release, but at the very least, maybe if he had come with a loose, sort of just limp mask that he could have held in his hand a little bit extra, because really the hands, my hand, can't see it. It's pointing over to the hands on the side. And also with the chimney diorama, there's nothing really else different about this guy other than the head sculpt which again, I think is pretty good. 100% likeness? Not necessarily, but I have to admit, it's a pretty good head sculpt. I think it trumps the stuff that we get with Marvel Legends. Speaking of trumping Marvel Legends, one thing that I'm always on the, on the GoPro side of things is that Marvel Select versus Marvel Legends, I think personally you get proportionately a better looking body from the Select line than you would with the Marvel Legends. It's unfortunate, the way that it always goes, that they are always using sort of similar body molds. Four or five. So if Spider-Man falls within one of those, hey, why not? We'll pull that mold down and turn it into a Spider-Man here. Select usually give you very exclusive molds other than really just store exclusives that give you a variation to the head sculpt. The bodies are molded for that specific figure and you may not see that again. It debates sort of the, and I'm not going to go off onto a tangent here, but it debates that topic of resources versus price point. Price point on a figure that's like a Marvel Legends, for example, always seem to continue to go up. In all honesty, I would probably spend the money and get a Marvel Select one because I feel like proportionately, mold-wise, I'm getting a better body than I would with the Marvel Legends. Okay, we'll shave the rest of that off. So, good head sculpt. Paint is really good on the head sculpt. It's kind of sort of a warmer flesh tone. I like that they put a little bit of reflection in Peter Parker's eyes, slash Tom Har Holland. I guess what they've done is they've added the flesh tone over top of whatever existing plastic would have been underneath it. As a result, the forehead sort of peeks out and says, hey there, I'm a little bit of colored plastic underneath. Not unless that is a little bit of residue that's come off of the hair. You can see there's like a little bit of a smudging up at the top there. Other than that, paint's really clean on this. Um, I loved the Homecoming suit, prefer it much more over the Infinity Wars Spider-Man costume myself. And now, of course, with the Spider-Man Far From Home, we're going to be getting ourselves yet another Spider-Man costume, which sounds great on paper. I just hope it doesn't turn into every new Spider-Man film, we have to have a new costume. Kind of gets that Batman exhausted look that we got with some of the, um, you know, the... Uh, Batman and Robin, for example, Batman Returns. We're talking about Batman. We're supposed to be talking about Spider-Man. So as it goes, you got that basketball sort of texturing happening here on the suit. That carries its way also into the blue as well. Both the blue and the red get that. And hopefully the light catches it just right. There you go. Thanks, light. Thank you, light and camera. Best of buddies. Friends to the end. Uh, the webbing is also very nice and cleanly applied there. A double web, not the singular web that we would have seen on earlier Spider-Man costumes. And there's the spider drone, which will come off. It wouldn't actually make that noise. I've just supplied that noise myself. Yeah, the arms nice and clean. You've got the nice bold black panel lining here. Those no strangers to this particular figure having maybe picked up the retail release, you're pretty much getting the exact same thing on this figure. Some nice raised elevated sculpt here on the back spider emblem. And you got some nice panel bold lining up at the top there. I like that all the lining isn't just suggested. Let me explain what I mean by that. It's not just painted on there. They've raised the surface, so they've sculpted areas in which the black should be there, they have raised that and not simply just painted over top of it. Like I said, proportionally, he's really as good of a Spider-Man as you're going to really get. Comparing this to a Marvel Legends, which I don't have right now, uh, this would be definitely the one I would go with more so. So, Spider-Man does come with a series of interchangeable hands. I decided for the opener of this review, I was going to use the closed fist. Sort of the yawn category of hands. If you want a little less yawn, we'll put Spider-Man down there for a second. Stay there, Spider-Man. 
He also comes with a pair of gripping hands. Ultimately, he doesn't grip anything. He doesn't come with any sort of accessories, but I'm sure you could easily find some webbing, or why not? Use your imagination. You could make your own webbing, so you twist ties, or I've also seen some people use a, a glue gun, although you probably might want your parent's guardian or the pack of wolves that are currently raising you to do that for you, just in case that's too hot. So some partially gripping hands. And then, of course, we reach off to the side of the backdrop, the side of obscurity, and we reach out and we grab some reaching, grabbing hands. Good for wall crawling, if you will. Now, being that there's nothing really on the back of them for a connecting plug, means that you probably would have to take some little bit of string, wrap it around his waist, for example, and you could have Spider-Man crawling up the side of your wall. How cool does that sound? That's your imagination. The hands, again, get the same treatment of webbing, and the webbing is sculpted in there rather than just simply painted. Good job there. And last but certainly not least, Spider-Man, of course, would be naked without them. He comes with his web shooting... Sounds like rockets. Web shooting hands, all of which can easily be changed out on Spider-Man. You just simply pull the hand out, replace the hand. Let's make sure we grab the right hand here. Thumbs go in. There you go. And you can have Spider-Man shooting the web. Any size. Any size that you're capable of making for yourself. And again, really looks good. It would be also something that would be so sad to find that they didn't include the web shooting hands. Luckily, that's news that I don't have to report. So let's go through Spider-Man's posability. Now, his head rotates all the way around. Technically, I say technically because it involves you having to force. You don't really want to do that, but the extra length of his hair at the back causes some friction. You can make that noise also while you're doing that. Up and down, slightly goes the head. Shoulders hinge outward. Shoulders hinge outward. You can also rotate the arms all the way around, like that. Swivel at the bicep. He has not one but two hinges in the elbow. So I guess if you wanted to touch his shoulders, he could do that. There is sort of that awkward, I've just sliced my hand, my elbow off, that sounds gross, with a giant serrated knife. And it just looks really, really flat. You're probably not gonna end up displaying him like this anyways. This is sort of a silly pose. If you went to someone's house and they were posing their Spider-Man like this, Jackson brings his friend Ricky in. Hey, what do you think of my Spider-Man? I would grant Jackson the opportunity, or I guess his friend the opportunity to say, you know what, I think you need somebody else who's posing your figures because you can't pose figures whatsoever. I don't even know what's happening here. But just to show you that that be the case. Hands rotate all the way around, hinges back and forth. You also have the upper torso ball joint. That's always a nice thing, up and down crunch. Nothing in the waist due to probably the extensive nature of the sculpting that they put in the torso. It really doesn't need necessarily waist swivel because you're really getting all the benefits up here. I don't know why you would need necessarily stuff happening down here. Legs go forward, legs go back, legs go out. There's a half swivel or half cut swivel on the thigh allowing the leg to rotate all the way around. Do I ever really show the leg going all the way around? I guess not. I mean, I think to myself, I wouldn't show it because in real life you couldn't do that unless you had some prosthetic leg that had a little dowel and you could just spin it. Uh, double hinge on the knee. That's nice. And of course, you've got the hinge on the foot. Slight ankle. I say slight. Oh, <laughs> get a load of this guy with this slight. A substantial ankle pivot gives you a fantastically sculpted, fantastically posed fantastically awesome Spider-Man in all his glory. The only thing, again, I really wish that the figure could have maybe had, I appreciate for the fact that he does get the unmasked Tom Holland slash Peter Parker hand sculpt, but I would have been thrilled as Punch, pleased as Punch, I believe the terminology phrase is, if he had had a relaxed mask. Not that he would have gripped in that hand because <laughs> that's the boring hand. Something that he could have gripped in his gripping hand. Just something to a little extra oomph to him. Not that the figure doesn't already have a whole lot of extra oomph.
Now, of course, this is a Disney store exclusive, so harsh reality will set in if you are looking to find this guy for yourself. The options are either find a Disney store in your area, and if not, you may have to source this guy online and hope whoever is selling them has a heart and doesn't charge some ludicrous price for it. I'm not all about ludicrous pricing. I don't want to pay ludicrous pricing. But I definitely think this guy is nice. Even though he does have the same diorama and the same, really the same accessories that the retail release of this guy had, the head sculpt really does more than make up for it. I don't think the head sculpt is 100% a likeness to Tom Holland, but I think both the head sculpt and the body, the pr body proportions that they've given this guy, still far exceed what we are getting with Marvel Legends. And for the price point, let's not also overlook the fact that you get a pretty freaking sweet display stand to go along with this guy as well. Something that for the same price point, Marvel Legends don't give you. Uh, the display stand has loads of possibilities. Of course, the one primary is displaying him with Peter here, but you could easily use it for other things as well. I know it's sort of blasphemy to say that. One thing I was thinking is if we eventually get ourselves a Friday 13th Part 8 Jason Voorhees, this could be the rooftop uh, where he's fighting on the top there and he knocks the guy's block off. Well, knocks his head off. I know I shouldn't be mixing genres and I certainly shouldn't be mixing companies, but it just goes to show that Diamond Select are kings. They could be crowned the kings of diorama and display bases. Something could easily be used with their own pieces or something could also easily be used with other things as well. Like I said, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, the best bet is first look for a Disney store and then go from there. If you've already picked up the initial one, let me know if you guys would be interested in picking this one up and if the new head sculpt is warranting enough of a pickup if you've already got this guy in your collection. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. Hey, why, why don't you, while you're at it, hit that little subscribe button down below. It's right there. If you haven't done it already, of course. I would hope that you already have. But if you haven't, hit that little subscribe button that's just below this video, and that'll guarantee that when new videos are coming to this channel, you'll never miss out. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.